Hello, everybody. Welcome to the course of extractive metallurgy. My name is Oscar Jaime Restrepo. I am professor of the School of Mines at Universidad Nacional de Colombia, Medellin. And in this course, we are going to discuss uh, all uh, the main topics about extractive metallurgy. The idea is to uh, share with you uh, some classes. Uh, we are going to present 18, 20 classes about the main topics on extractive metallurgy. The first, uh, the idea is to, uh, to start the course with uh, principles of extractive metallurgy. This is the first class. Then we are going to present the extractive metallurgy of different metals. Uh, first, the iron and steel production. And then we are going to present the fundamentals of the non-ferrosus non uh, metals like uh, aluminum, uh, copper, zinc, uh, lead, and nickel. Uh, we are going to present the main topics in order to obtain uh, these uh, main uh, metals. Then uh, the idea is to continue the course with the fundamentals of thermodynamics. We are going to make a, a, a short review about uh, metal, uh, thermodynamical topics on metallurgy, then uh, the cinetic of the metallurgical process. Uh, we are going to continue with uh, some mass balance, uh, make some exercises in extractive metallurgy, uh, hydrometallurgy and pyrometallurgy. And then we are going to, um, to have the main processes, the main uh, typical processes in, in extractive metallurgy. Hydrometallurgical, pyrometallurgical, electrometallurgical, and bio-hydrometallurgical processes. First, the first classes will be, we will be have the classes on hydrometallurgy. Uh, we are going to make some, uh, with some details in a met extractive metallurgy of gold with some explanation. And then we are going to present the fundamentals of uh, gold extraction. Then we are going to present the consideration, main considerations in pyrometallurgical processing, drying, calcination processing, roasting, and reduction. This is uh, con some conditions of this pyrometallurgical process. Then we are going to continue with electrometallurgical uh, aspects to obtain metals. And then finally, we are going to present the fundamentals on uh, biometallurgical, biometallurgical process, biohydrometallurgical process. Finally, in order to uh, finally uh, end the class, the course, we are going to present the environmental topics, the more important environmental topics about uh, extractive ecology. Okay, welcome to the course. I hope you enjoy the course. You have the, the possibility to, to, lead, uh, to know a little more about extractive metallurgy. Nowadays, it's not easy to find uh, uh, some considerations about extractive metallurgy. And that's why I, I am going to present you this course as a possibility of uh, continue working together in different uh, topics, okay? Uh, okay. The, the idea is to uh, continue, uh, present the most important topics in extractive metallurgy and some consideration on why it's important to um, transform the minerals to, of, in order to obtain the, 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 the metals in order to obtain final products uh, in, 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 the, in the mining industry. Uh, it's a, it's the, the extractive metallurgy is extractive metallurgy is a very important area of knowledge, and is uh, focused in obtaining metals. But not only metals; we could obtain also uh, met, oxide metals or different intermediate products that could be important. It, it depends on the focus. Uh, it depends on the the final product you want. And that's why we, we, we could uh, select different processing to obtain the final product. We could, obtain, we could use uh, pyrometallurgical processing if we, if we work with uh, uh, high temperature processing. We, uh, hydrometallurgical processing, hydrometallurgy is uh, the, 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 the method to obtain them, the metals in aqueous solutions. And uh, electrometallurgical, Electrometallurgy uh, is, uh, use, is used when you apply electricity to obtain the main processes. But first of all, we have to start the process 
uh, working or um, no, have knowledge about the uh, uh, periodic tables of the elements. Uh, the idea is to, uh, um, to know about the minerals, to know about the, how is uh, obtained, how is presented the different elements in the nature, how is possible to find the elements in, 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 in the air, in the surface of the air. Uh, the main groups, the main groups uh, of the, of the mineral, mineralogical groups are, uh, are in, 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 different, in different areas. And the idea is to know a little more about that. The, you can find the metals free. For instance, you can, you can find gold, free metals like uh, precious materials, precious metals like gold, uh, silver, and the platinum group. The platinum group like platinum, palladium, iridium, rhodium, osmium, ruthenium. They are free metals. You can find that metals free without company, without other elements with them. Uh, but maybe they are not the most important uh, association of metals that could, you could find. Maybe it could be more easy to find sulfides. Metals like sulfides. It's very common to find the metals uh, with sulfur, uh, like copper, like zinc, uh, nickel, lead, they are very important metals uh, that are in company of sulfur uh, and this mixture of metals with sulfur is sulfides. Sulfides are very important association, mineralogical association to find the metals. Other very important association are oxides. The oxides are very common in, in, in the surface of the air, in the crust of the air, and you can find like iron. Iron is very common. Uh, aluminium is very common, like oxides. And so oxides are very, uh, uh, very common to find in the in the nature. Mm, with sulfide, with oxides, it's common to obtain to to find silicates. Aluminium silicates, silicon silicon aluminates are a, a very common association, mineralogical, mineralogical association, and it's important to find that kind of metals and to define uh, how to use that. Uh, aluminum uh, uh, silicates, aluminum silicates are very used for the ceramic industry, for instance, and are very important to, to obtain like kind of different kinds of metals. Another uh, mineralogical association that are common are carbonates, silicate chlorides, phosphates, and different. It's important to determine to determine, determine which are the main uh, mineralogical association in order to find which will be the methodology you will use in extractive metallurgy, pyrometallurgy, electrometallurgy, or hydrometallurgy, or biometallurgy. It depends on. It's very important to know that. For instance, uh, this is the, the main things. For instance, we could find the metals free without associations. The name is native metals, as we, I, I explained you, gold, platinum, and the group. Sulfurs, oxides, uh, in, in the group of sulfurs, you could find calcoparite, calcosine, uh, sphalerite, galen, uh, some different metals like this. In oxides, it's very common to obtain uh, iron, aluminum, tin, uh, uh, some quartz, and it's very important to know. Uh, another group is alites, uh, like uh, chloride sulfur, chloride uh, or sodium, and different ki kind of salts, the salts are very alites. Oxy salts are very common. And in the, in, in the, depending on the mineral association, we define which will be the, the, the root, the, mineral, the metallurgical root, pyrometallurgy, hydrometallurgy, or electrometallurgy, as I told you. Uh, and depends on the association, depends the, 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 the bond of the metals. The bond is very important because we have uh, a very high temperature, very high energy bonds, and you need very high energy, energy processing, like pyrometallurgy. 
And if the, the atomic bond is not very high, it's not very energetic, maybe you could use another processing like uh, hydrometallurgy. Uh, the different um, processes in pyrometallurgy are calcination, roasting, uh, volatilization, uh, uh, metallothermy, so, something like this. And uh, in other metallurgy, the most typical, the most typical processing are leaching, um, purification, or concentration. And finally, the, the precipitation. We, we, we had to define how is the bone of the as mineral, mineralogical association in order to define which will be the methodology to obtain the metal. This is very important. Okay, uh, we are going to discuss about hydrometallurgy. Uh, hydrometallurgy is very selective method to obtain the metals, to uh, process in the, the minerals, and it's very important to, to, to work with them. It's very common in the industry. And the most important thing is the hydrometallurgy processing needs low energy because you use aqueous solutions. The first stage in the hydrometallurgy processing is the dissolution. Dissolution, and then we, we make some concentration of purification of the solution. And finally, the, the, the next step, the next stage in the hydrometallurgy processing is the precipitation processing. It's, it's, it's important because it's very selective and it depends of, of course, the characteristics of the, uh, the mineral you are, we are going, to, that we are going to, to work, we are going to process. And the other is the, 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 the solvent we are going to use. It's very important to define which build the, the, the solvent we are used. In a typical, in a typical hydrometallurgic processing, we, we had the minerals and then we process, of course, first of all, we had to define, we had to, the, to prepare the mineral, to prepare the, the size of the mineral in order to proceed with the leaching. The leaching process is, 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 it depends on the typical, the, 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 the solvent in order to define how will be the cinetics of the process of course, the thermodynamic of the process. And then we are going to make the, the we have a, a, a solution and we are going to make the, the, the separation in, 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 the, in the liquid solution, in the aqueous solution. Then we are going to separate the, with a purification process and then with a precipitation process in, in order to, to have two different phases. Uh, first of all, uh, we have, uh, solid phase with the mineral and liquid phase with the solvent. We make the solution and we will have only one phase. And then we are going to precipitate the, 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 min the interest, the mineral of interest. And then, we, uh, of course, we will have two, again, two phases. Uh, the mineral, the, the interest, the metal of interest or species of interest that is in solid. And then the uh, liquid phase uh, we are going to discard on reprocess or recirculate it's very important here we are going to discuss at the end of the course we are going to discuss about the environmental topics of the of the process of this kind of process it's very important uh, this uh, hydrometallurgical process is important because you could recover a very pure a very pure product uh, it depends on the the grade or selectivity that have the the, the solvent uh, of course, in the process, you, you produce some impurities that you have to recover uh, later, but it's very important to take into account. You are responsibility. You have, you have the responsibility to, to, to work with different, the different uh, currents of, of the process. Uh, the pure metal, of course, is your responsibility, but at the same time, you have to look or you have to work with the uh, another, another, another um, circuits, another products, the inputs, the tails. You had to process all, all, all the, the different materials. Not the, only the interest material, also the tailings. You are responsible for the tailings. It's our responsibility, our responsibility as uh, engineers of the process. Of course, uh, if we are going to, when we are going to decide which methodology we are going to use, we have to consider 
the advantages and uh, disadvantages of the different processes. For instance, if we are going to uh, work with pyrometallurgical processing, we have to discuss which are the most important advantages of the pyrometallurgical. The, the, the first advantages are in the pyrometallurgical process are um, is very is high speed velocity. The, the velocity is very high. And when you need to, to have a high uh, reaction rates, uh, pyrometallurgical processes are very important. Uh, of course, you, the, 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 the production is, is higher. Uh, the, 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 the production, the level of production is very high uh, compared with another, with another pro processing. And you, you don't need a very high reactors. You could have small reactors and produce a lot of, have a lot of production. Uh, pyrometallurgy is very uh, useful when you have a complex uh, mineral complex, like the, the characteristic of the, of the mineral as a complex. Maybe you have a combination of minerals as very common. And when you have that kind of uh, pro uh, products, it's very useful to use pyrometallurgical process. And of course, uh, to, to process, to process uh, minerals with, that have different origins. Uh, that is important too, because when you use pyrometallurgical processing, the, the energy is very high and thus it's, it's, it's possible to, to obtain only one product. But of course, uh, pyrometallurgical process has some disadvantage and some of them are, uh, it's, not, it's, it's not a good idea to work with uh, poor minerals. When the weight of the minerals are poor, it's not, it's, it's not recommended to, to work with pyrometallurgical processing. Um, in pyrometallurgical process, uh, processing, the, the selectivity of the, of the process is not very high. Uh, when you have um, uh, some uh, is, um, minerals that have is, uh, low purity, it's very difficult to obtain that kind of metals because the selectivity of, the, of these processes is, is low, really. Uh, in, in pyrometallurgical processing, it's very common to use different, different levels, different stage. Uh, for instance, in, in copper, when you are going to work in copper, copper has at least two or three stage, and you need two or three stage of, of, of processing, like an iron, when you are going to produce, when you are producing steel, you need at least two different uh, furnaces. And it's, it's, it's common, I, of course, this is expensive. And uh, the, one of the most important disadvantage of the pyrometallurgical process is to have uh, uh, gases. Uh, where you have to work with the gases. You have to eliminate the, the contamination of the gases. And sometimes it's, it's expensive and not easy. In the same time, in the same idea, you, the hydrometallurgical processing has some difficulties, of course, and some advantages and some disadvantages. The, the main advantage of the hydrometallurgical process is uh, you, 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 can, you can work with uh, poor minerals, uh, minerals of low grade. Uh, low grade minerals is difficult to work with pyrometallurgical processes, but it's easy to work with hydrometallurgical processes, and this is important. And it's more selective. Uh, the, the, selecti the selectivity of uh, hydrometallurgical processes is, is, is high. When you use uh, 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 the, the appropriate solvent, the selectivity is very high. Of course, the purity of the pure the purity of the, of, the, of the final product could be very high. It's important. Uh, of course, uh, it's uh, easy to, uh, or easier to control the reactors because the reactors on uh, hydrometallurgical processing is, is no, no complicated. It's, it's, it's easy to manage. And um, you don't have gases. This is important in, in, in hydrometallurgical processing. You don't have gases. And it's, it's, it's easy to, to manage the processing. Of course, the characteristics of uh, hydrometallurgical disadvantages of some, some disadvantages of the hydrometallurgical process uh, are uh, important to, to note. Like uh, in some cases, the, the reaction, the, the, the speed of the reaction is not high, slow. It, it happens in, in the gold, the gold um, uh, metallurgy. 
cyanidation processing takes more than 24 hours. And of course, in, in some times it's necessary to, to, to have more velocity, but typical, typical uh, hydrometallurgical processing has a slow speeds. And uh, of course, the reactors are not very high. Some, some of the reactors are high, but typically the, the capacity of the, of the reactors are not very high. Of course, the production could be uh, lower. Now, and um, sometimes uh, you have, you have um, variation of the grade of the minerals and it produce uh, some wasted, some tails that is necessary to manage and it's difficult to control. This is a disadvantage and it's important to, to note that it's necessary to work in that direction. And uh, of course, you are working with sol uh, liquid solutions and sometimes you have problems of sewage, uh, about sewage and it's necessary to control and to have a very good control of the, of the process. Sometimes it's, it's typical and you have to take into account. Okay. Uh, about uh, extractive metallurgy is, 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 a, is a complex processing because you are working with uh, in different phases. You are uh, it's not uh, it's not homogeneous. It's heterogeneous production. When you are working with uh, uh, hydrometallurgy or pyrometallurgy or electrometallurgy or bio bio hydrometallurgy, you have different phases in the processing. And you have solid phases, liquid phases, and gaze, gaze phases simultaneously. And it's an heterogeneous situation and it's important to work. For instance, when you are producing metal, when you, you are producing slag, you are producing space, powders, uh, the, the conditions are different. And uh, sometimes it's not easy. Of course, in a chemical production, it's easy to have uh, homogeneous uh, reactions, but here you are deep heterogeneous and it's necessary to consider that, that, that aspect. Some examples of that kind of uh, heterogeneous reactions are uh, reactions uh, between solid and liquid, solid and gas, solid and solid, liquid and liquid, and liquid and gas. And it's, it's in, in the different processes, for instance, Solid and liquid is very typical in, in hydrometallurgy of, of, of uh, sulfides or hydrometallurgy of oxides uh, on the process of cementation, on the process in, in, the, in the precipitation process in, in hydrometallurgy. Uh, reactions between solid and gas is typical in, in pyrometallurgy. In pyrometallurgy, you, you have some metal oxidations of uh, roasting or calcination process this is very common uh, in solid and solid uh, reactions is typical in, in when you are preparing uh, pyrometallurgical processing maybe when you obtain the slag during the slag uh, or during the uh, purification process of some materials could be possible to obtain uh, liquid liquid in different in different uh, phases for instance also when you produce the fusion the fusion of the of the minerals in a in a reactor in a furnace for instance when you are making siderurgy processing uh, you, you you obtain the iron the peak iron at the same time of the slag you have two different uh, liquid phases and it's important to uh, characterize the, the, the that two phases and it's important and of course when you you can you could have the liquid and gas uh, reactions uh, is very common also mm, in in pyrometallurgy in pyrometallurgy when you are you are going to the refin refination processes the the final the, looking for the final composition of the of the metals it's very common okay uh, in extractive metallurgy, it's very important to define to define the characteristics of the reactors and, and the characteristics of the reagents, the chemical reagents, uh, not only in hydrometallurgical processing, also in pyrometallurgical. Which are what are the main characteristics of the of the reagents? 
which are the characteristics of the, uh, for instance, in, in a hydrometallurgical process, which are the characteristics of the mineral and which are the characteristics of the solvent in order to define uh, how easy it is to recover, how easy is the process, how, wh which, which will be the, uh, the, the, the characteristics of, what are, will be the, the characteristics of the processing. And of course, wh wh which will be the, the cause of the process. That's what is very important to know about the characteristics of the processes in order to define uh, this kind of materials. In hydrometallurgy, you have you have uh, different kinds of solvents. You have uh, reacts, reactions, reagents uh, to obtain. You have you have uh, acids, ba acids, ba ba acids, uh, complex complex materials, oxidizers, reducers. Uh, and pyrometallurgy is very important to to define the the reduction processing, uh, which will be the the reagent will be the, the product that could help you in the, re, in the reduction processing. Uh, at the same time, you are going to do a oxidation process, will be, which will be the, the, the reagents, the main reagents. Of course, um, in the hydrometallurgical processing, it's important to define if you are going to work with acid uh, reagents or basic reagents. For instance, if you are going to work with uh, acid reagents we are going you are going to you could discuss you are going to you is is necessary to you to uh, select uh, sulfuric acid nitric acid chloridic acid acid in order to define which will be the solvent okay yeah. or maybe you are going to to obtain gold and you are going to use a, a cyanidation processing in the cyanidation processing is important to work in pH a pH, pH high near to 11 is a basic uh, solution. That's why it's important to define the characteristics of the, of the process in order to define. And of course, in, in hydrometallurgy, pyrometallurgy, electrometallurgy, bio, bio hydrometallurgy, define the characteristics of the transformation. How, which will be, which will be the, 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 the chemical reactions you are going to have the different characteristics of the atmosphere in a pyrometallurgical process. It's not the same to have um, uh, oxidation atmosphere, atmosphere with oxide, uh, or a reduction atmosphere. It's necessary to define the characteristics of the environment in order to uh, define the characteristics of the, the characteristics of the final product. Uh, which kind of solution you are going to have? which kind of uh, ion interchange, the characteristics, of, the characteristics of the minerals, the characteristics of the metal species, the characteristics of the number of electrons or the number of, of uh, equivalents you are going to transform, you are going to share in order to um, assure the quality of the final processing. Uh, here, I want to, I would like to, to present you that it's necessary to control, to control very well the, the, the chemical of the productions. The, the chemical reactions are not spontaneous. You, are, you, you define the characteristics, the characteristics of, the, of the reaction, the chemical reaction. It depends on you because you are the engineer in the plant, in the metallurgical plant. And you know, it's necessary you know the, the, the typical, the, the characteristics the condition of the processing in order to define not only the thermodynamics or the processing, the cinetics of the processing, also the characteristics, the characteristics of the final products. It depends on you. You are the responsibility. You, you have the responsibility of to define that kind of things. Okay. Um, this is uh, this this was the, the, the most important topics or uh, to take into account in the, in, in the metallurgical uh, aspects of the uh, transformation of minerals. Uh, I would like to, to, present, to, to present you the, the motivation in order to discuss about the characteristics, the characteristics of the different processes to obtain minerals. It's necessary to define which kind of metals we are going to obtain 
how is the origin of the metals, uh, the mineral association of the metals, and the, the economical topics of the processing. It's necessary to take all the things, all the things into account in order to have an a special, uh, a very exit, uh, successful processing. It depends on you. And this is the characteristics of this, uh, of this course. We are going to discuss that kind of things. We are going to discuss uh, the fundamentals. We are going to discuss the characteristics. We are going to discuss the conditions in order to put the, the things. Uh, and it's necessary to have a very good aspect. And it's, it's necessary to have a very good knowledge. Uh, I would like to, in, to insist, I would like to invite you to work hard in order to have very good fundamentals. This is the, this course. This course, uh, we are going to, to present the fundamentals. We are going to present the, the main conditions in order to know a little more about the sector metallurgy and to have a very good uh, pro final approach. Uh, this is uh, my idea with this course. I invite you to, to be with us, uh, continue working here, and to work in, in the, 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 the different characteristics of the processing. Uh, in order to motivate you to know a little more about SFT metallurgy. It's not very common now. Uh, the school of, uh, the school of uh, formation in SFT metallurgy are not very common now. Uh, my idea is to invite you in different countries to be motivated to, to study and to define the main, uh, the main topics in SFT metallurgy in order to, um, to have the arguments to increase uh, and the, the quality of the formation, the quality of the professional you are, and of course, to contribute to our economies, to contribute to our formation, and to have a very good uh, industry. And of course, at the same time, to have the motivation to research and to look for new developments and to innovate in the, in the knowledge of uh, strategic metallurgy. Strategic metallurgy is very uh, traditional uh, field of, of work, but we have to continue be preparing, be prepared. It's necessary to continue be prepared in the topics in order to have the best conditions. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. I would like to invite you to the second class. Uh, the second class uh, will be about uh, strategic metallurgy of iron metals first, or we are going to discuss about iron and steel, and then we are going to discuss and, and with the metallurgical process of different metals. Thank you very much for your attention and continue working with us. Bye-bye, have a good day.